Okay, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to University of East Anglia. This is Productivity East that I'm standing outside, and my name's Chris Atkin. I'm the head of engineering at UEA. So our talk tonight is called, If God Didn't Make It, An Engineer Did. And that's a famous quote from the late Duke of Edinburgh, who was a great friend to engineering. And his point was really this, that everything that surrounds us uh, is ultimately designed and made by engineers, the buildings that we live in, the vehicles that we're transported in, and the devices that we use to communicate. So what I want to do this evening is take you through the process by which we convert ideas into reality. Okay, before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about how we sort through ideas, work out which are good ideas, which are not so good ideas, and then refine what we call our design to include aspects of functional requirements, so what the device actually has to do. And then finally, one of the most challenging things that a lot of people never think about is how do we make it? But before we do that, let's have a look at some of the things that engineers turn their hand to. This first example will be familiar to those living in Norfolk. So we have a windmill and its modern equivalent, a wind turbine. So obviously wind was important for powering grain mills in the past and is increasingly seen as a key source of renewable energy in the present. But the thing is that these machines were designed, built and are maintained by engineers. Here's another example, the fantastic Millau viaduct in France. So here you see some very steep slopes and real problems for traffic. Not only do we have poor traffic flow, but we have a lot of emissions as trucks and the like have to climb the hills and also a bit of a blight on the community below. So you may think the great viaduct looks horrific. If you're a civil engineer, you probably think it's one of the most wonderful things you've seen. And here's an artfully decorated airliner. The point here being to emphasize the carbon fiber structure in the Airbus A350 shown. The A350 and its Boeing equivalent, the 787, are quite revolutionary aircraft that have enormous range. And one of the interesting aspects of airliner design is that the Australian airline Qantas has asked both companies to increase the already long ranges so that these aircraft can fly non-stop from Europe to Australia. But of course, that may be a good thing for Qantas and for Australians, but is it a good thing for the rest of the planet? And these are questions that we should be asking ourselves. So here's another form of transport, okay, a train. And you guys may know that unlike aircraft, trains are probably the most energy efficient form of transport. But what I've got here is not to show you a train, it's to show you the new Thameslink railway line, which opened through the centre of London a few years back. And what's impressive about the Thameslink core, as it's known, is not so much the rolling stock, but is the control system. So at a certain point, London St Pancras, I think, going south, the trains hand over control from the drivers to the automatic system. And this basically times the passage of the trains through this bit of track, coming out at London Blackfriars and times the opening of the door and it's all automated. Is this a good thing? I hear you ask. What happened about people being in control? Well, making it automatically controlled has quadrupled the number of passengers who can travel through between those four stations. And that's an impressive achievement. If we're talking about quadrupling capacity, what about modern day communications? So you may think that your mobile phone is an amazing thing, an amazing piece of technology that's allowed you to remain connected with the world. It isn't really the phone. It's the telecommunications. It's the data compression algorithms that are used to mean that this TV footage can be transmitted at relatively low bandwidth, which has really revolutionized communications. So the handset is one thing, but the uh, radio frequency technology is the other and also the encryption algorithms and finally of course we've got health monitoring and all manner of devices which are allowing medics to keep an eye on patients without actually standing next to them and increasingly for those who need medication and need medication levels in their bloodstream to be monitored full time uh, these devices will allow remote data transfer of um, 
blood drug levels and this kind of thing. So again, improving health monitoring, improving both uh, the health and also the quality of life of the people who benefit from this sort of technology. Of course, we can admire all these achievements and we've got some understanding of why these things are here and what we use them for. But engineering begins at a much earlier stage than that. And that's really to understand what we call top level requirements for a project. So let me give you an example. Say Chris is really into planes and is really good at designing planes. And Chris comes to you and says, I've got a fantastic idea. I'm going to design a plane that can fly from Norwich to Thetford. Now, what you should say is, Chris, that's amazing. And nobody can design planes better than you. But is that really what we need? A plane that can fly from Norwich to Thetford? You know, maybe a train would be better. People have already got other forms of transport as well. And this is the kind of discussion that is very important in the early stages of engineering design is what is the problem that you're trying to solve? What is it that people need? And increasingly, with sustainability being ever more important consideration, we've really got to ask ourselves, what is the best solution? And unfortunately, it's not always the cool stuff. Although if we can design something that's cool and does the right job, then even better. So engineering starts with top level requirements and there's usually quite a lot of discussion about what those might be and how those are going to be met. So engineering ultimately starts with brainstorming and teamwork. And that's what you can see here, which is our first year engineering students presenting some of the ideas they've had to visiting industrialists and discussing amongst themselves whether the solution makes sense or not. And discussion is a really, really important part, getting lots of different opinions as to how we might solve the problem at hand. So the brainstorming around requirements is the start of quite a lengthy engineering design process where we gradually begin to decide on how we're going to solve the problem and what that solution might look like. And we might call that conceptual design or preliminary design, which is basically just beginning to flesh out with sketches, with images, what our design concept might look like. And then after quite a lot of work on that, we then start to really hammer out the functional requirements of our design. What are the nuts and bolts of what it has to do? So we talk about functional requirements. So almost all of us have got one of these. And you'll know that what you're interested in is how easy it is to navigate the screen, get the apps that you want, make sure that communication is good, connectivity is good. But there are some other things we have to think about when we're designing a phone. OK, first and foremost, we need to think about sustainability, how much energy the phone actually uses. Now, you guys will think about this as standby time, or how many hours you can listen to music to between charges. And I know that for an iPhone 12, for example, standby time or listening time is typically 65 hours. OK, if you're looking at what that means in terms of battery discharge, that means that all the iPhones in the world, if you were just listening to music, would still require one gigawatt of energy to power them. OK, and that's half the capacity of the new Norfolk Boreas wind farm that's being planned. So energy requirement, even though it's tiny for a phone like this, you multiply it by 6,000 million. Those are the kind of things you have to think about. What else do we need to do about this phone? Well, clearly, if you drop it, you don't want it to break. And most importantly, if you drop it down the loo, you don't want it to be damaged by the water. All through the design process, we really need to bear in mind how we're going to transform the idea from a piece of paper or an electronic image into something that can actually be made. And it's now time to move on to the next part of our talk this evening. My colleague Yogesh is now going to talk you through how we actually start to draft an idea in a 3D format that we can think about manufacturing it. After this, we'll then talk about how we actually go about manufacturing stuff using the 3D print capability that we have here at Productivity East. So, hello. So let me start uh, with my 
own CAD design. So here I want to just show you the same design which Chris was mentioning about a model of a gearbox. Now, definitely once we brainstorm the solution as far as transmission of the power is concerned, but definitely we don't want to make directly the complex forms like this. First we brainstorm and then we make simple, simple components and then we assemble that. And I'm taking today when software Fusion 360 to demonstrate a very simple components how we can build. Now, this is a gearbox uh, which is there on the screen and we have the capabilities of the software to further deep drive and see the assembly. And then we can rotate and we can find out different motions, different correlations between the forces and transmissions so that we can do that. Okay, so this is a little bit complicated, seems to be, but we will see a demonstration of a very simple component today, and that is a simple mobile phone holder. Now, we know that each one of us, we have a mobile phone, but many times when we travel, uh, there is a problem uh, to keep the mobile and to see the screen or that we cannot hold it continuously in the hand. So how to build simple mobile phone holder? So let's see that uh, how a CAD software can help us and then we will actually see how even we can manufacture it and we'll print it by using 3D printer. So let's start sketching a simple design. So as far as when we are in a CAD and if you want to print, what we are going to do is we'll do a simple 2D design or 2D drawing and then we'll convert the 2D into 3D and then eventually we can play with that. So we can have different shapes as far as sketching is concerned, but let me see first how we can build a simple design okay so here is this interface as far as fusion 360 software is concerned now in this interface you can see that there are variety of options which are available and we can create different shapes we can modify different shapes we can add different constraints and we can inspect we can give dimensions so there are different types of options which are available in any software so let's start uh, building a 2D shapes. So what I will do is I will say create and I will draw line. So I'll just say line and you can see that we can add here the dimension. So I'll add some dimension here and then I'll continue the line from here and I'll just draw a line again. Now here, what I will do is I'll give the further dimensions and I'll add some angle here and we have this particular two lines which are at an angle now i'll go here and i'll say modify and i'll simply create an offset for offset i'll select this two lines now you can see that we can have the offset inside or outside i'll just say an offset of four and i'll enter now we got an offset and same two lines at a, at a distance of four it has created. In the next step, I'll again go to create and I'll say circle and I'll select a circle option. So you can see here we have different types of options which we can draw. We have two point circle, three point circle. I'll select a two point circle. I'll just zoom it. Now by using mouse, we can zoom this. So let me zoom it here and I'll select again the circle command. I'll go for a two point circle. I'll take this as a first point and this as a second point and I'll enter. Now we got a geometry like this. Still it is not a closed geometry here. And if we want to convert the 2D geometry into 3D geometry, we will require a closed image or a closed 2D diagram. So now what we will do is I'll again zoom this and I'll simply say, trim and I'll just trim this and it has created a trim it has just kept outside and inside it has just trimmed it now I want to close this here again so what I'll do is I'll zoom here and again I will go on create and I will say circle again I'll go for a two point I'll take this as first point I'll go straight and I'll give some distance say 24 and we can see that it has created a circle here now in the next step again i'll go to modify and i will say 
offset and i'll select here the same circle which we have drawn again you can see here an arrow has come we can offset it inside or outside again i'll say here now here we can say plus or minus so i'll just say minus 4 and enter and we can see that it is touching this particular point at the corner here and it has created the geometry like this now it is a closed geometry but we don't want this type of geometry what i will do is now again i'll go to create a circle and i'll create a circle which is two point circle and from here i'll just take this as the first point and i'll take this as the second point and i have created a circle now with this our 2d geometry is completed and we can see that this is a closed geometry now this is a plane and as it is a plane you can see that it is having a shade so that is a plane now we got a 2d and we want to convert it into 3d but before that i want to trim some of this area so what i'll do is i'll just go in modify and again i will say trim so i don't i don't want this portion so i'll trim this i don't want this so i'll trim this I don't want this, so I'll trim this, and I also don't want this, so I'll trim this. So now you can see that this is a perfect plane, a 2D plane, which I want, and then I'll just finish sketch. So this is a sketch now, which I want, uh, and I want to further extrude it uh, for developing into my mobile holder. So what I'll do now, again, if you see, there are different options here. So I'll just say extrude now extrude is very important option here to convert 2d into 3d and when we have extrude we can either extrude it on this side or we can extrude it again on the positive or negative side we can go for any side and we are having variety of options here we can see that there's a dialog box which is appearing here and we have variety of options here so what i will do is i'll simply say here 60 okay and i will not go in details about what it can do but there are lots of different options here and i'll simply say okay now you can see here this is a perfect mobile holder and we can actually uh, particularly hold here our mobile and it will well support to the mobile but but i want further changes by using the software which i want to do here so you can see now this is a sharp edge i don't want this sharp edge so we can further process this so what we can do is there are some more commands here there are variety of commands but i just want to show you a few of the important commands like say fillet now fillet is a very important command especially when you want to avoid the sharp edges so what i'll do is i'll just select this edge and I will say four and you can see that if i say okay so you can see that now there is no sharp edge here it is perfectly filled and remove the sharp edge similarly i can repeat the fillet command and i can select this edge and again here also you can pull it by the arrow or you can simply enter the value here and you can say fillet so this is how by creating a simple geometry and simple 2d plane we have extruded and we have created a, a 3d mobile holder and similarly you can have variety of designs and you can go for different types of design for example uh, this is one design which is uh, you can see here this is again a mobile holder only so it depends all what you want to achieve and which type of geometry you want to go there are some more you can see uh, uh, this is one more and i will just show you a few of the more designs so this is one more okay now this is also a mobile holder uh, but however this is like a compact this can fold so you can unfold this you can fold this so it is easy to carry now there are few more things which i want to show you here now in this particular mobile holder if you want to change the appearance or color there are options here so you can see there are lots of options here you can create and you can change now if you want to say add 
some text here that also you can do that so we can say simply create sketch select this particular plane and go here create say text and you can just add text here and you can create a text box here now i can simply add the text here if you want you can adjust the text by different way you can have an angle you can keep it at any angle you can rotate it so i'll just simply say okay you can move it further okay and i'll say finish sketch now it has created the sketch now what you can do is you can also extrude this sketch so again if you go for extrude and you can select this sketch and you can see that you can extrude it at the positive side or negative side if you extrude it at the positive side it will come up the words will come out and you can see that it will give the impression of the words like this if you don't want to extrude in the positive side you can extrude it on the negative side you can edit that feature and you can go you can go even throughout and if you say okay now what you can see is now it has added the material so if you just go here and say edit feature you can see here it has join rather than join if you say cut and if you say okay so it will cut that and you can see that it has created the uea uh, so these particular letters what we have selected and that has imprinted so this is how we can add the letters the text and we can even there is a time line which is coming here and on this you can go and you can edit the features even afterwards also now here i also want to show you few important features if you want to change the color or so or appearance so here you can see that uh, you can change the appearance so when you go for the appearance so definitely we have a screen and here there is a library which is generally available in any software in this library there are variety of fabrics or glass or leather or different types of material is available so for example if we just select uh, say metal and there are different types of metals here and if you just select brass say brass polish if you select this and just keep it and you can see that we can add that material to this so like that we can change variety of properties of this particular mobile folder eventually when we have different types of designs like this and when we play the timeline here it will also show you how you have plotted it so it will just play your timeline and it will show you exactly uh, how you have basically drawn this from start till the end so this is a very good feature where you can actually either go back and at different stages of the timeline you can edit this particular image or what you can uh, what you can do is you can change it afterwards so that is one way of doing that now i just want to further at the end show you one very important feature of the software here and that is basically known as the rendering part now i have rendered this here so you can see that here there is a render option which is given to us and when we render it will be giving you the very high image high uh, definition image basically here and you can see here you can hold your mobile uh, and like that you can check so this is how there are different types of designs uh, what we can basically do as far as using the software is concerned and then once our design is ready for example here suppose our design is ready then what we can do is we can simply save this design and after saving this design then what we can further do if you want to print this there is a option in the file and we can go for 3d print and then we can send this particular file to the 3d printer this is how there are variety of tools which are available in the cad software and 
as earlier it was mentioned that you have to convert your ideas into reality and when we want to convert our ideas into reality after brainstorming we have to present our ideas in a better way and to convert into reality we have to go for sketching and then convert into the design for manufacture and design for manufacture it can either go for additive manufacturing or subtractive manufacturing we have to convert it into models like car models and this is further we can uh, demonstrate this can be also converted into engineering drawings and this can be then sent uh, to the printing or to the manufacturing and there are variety of tools which are available here you can do the surface and machine and different types of analysis so that is what is basically very very important feature here which is available as far as this particular car software is concerned now the one more thing which i was showing earlier uh, as far as this particular uh, mobile folder uh, is concerned the beauty of this is that you can also add joints here and there are different types of joints which you can add and when you 3d print this uh, for some of the joints you can even print the three using 3d printer the same joints and it will keep its functionality now these joints are very important features here especially when you are plotting i was showing earlier the gearbox and in that gearbox also we can study different types of motions and how motion is transferred by using different gears so that is one more function which is very important as far as this CAD software is concerned and there are some more additional advanced options which are available in any CAD software and that is uh, rendering I have already told you can animate your CAD and you can animate your assemblies you can simulate it and you do the analysis and there are further options of converting your model 3d model again into engineering drawing and the manufacturing CNC programming. So all these options are very important and whatever the different types of mobile holders you, you can design. So you may see on my left hand screen, there are different types of designs, uh, which I have just uh, shown you in my library and all these different types of designs of the mobile holder, which we can print. And you can see that as when you come to the brainstorming the, for the problem to hold the mobile and to see the screen uh, without uh, giving stretch to the hand for the long journeys, for example, during the travel, uh, you want to design a mobile holder and there are, after brainstorming, there are multiple solutions which are coming out. And of course, out of this multiple solution, there can be different criteria of choosing the right solution or choosing different right solutions. So this is how actually the engineering design process work. And this is how CAD uh, is very useful as far as our manufacturing is concerned. Now, for CAM, that is computer aided manufacturing, whether it is CNC or whether it is 3D printing, digital technologies and softwares like CAD softwares like Fusion 360 or any other software like SolidWorks are very, very useful. And we can design our different models and we can also very easily print it and see the performance of our design so now i'm just passing to my colleague dom or to you dom now we will see actual demonstration of different 3d prints of these mobile holders Okay. okay, so thanks very much, Yogesh. So that brings us to the final part of the evening where I'm just going to talk you through some of the things that we've printed ourselves. Obviously, in line with the message I've given you right at the start is we've just not gone done any grand things because we thought very carefully about what we want to do. So I wanted first to mention some of the differences between desktop 3D printing that you might have encountered at school or college or at home and the kind of printers that we have here at the UEA, uh, industrial quality 3D printers. So the first thing that you might not have encountered is the print of soluble support material alongside your 
plastics, but you create your object out of. Uh, and that gives us a lot of capability. Um, it underpins the high quality of industrial printing that you can get, but also it allows us to make objects with voids in them. So here we've got a collection of toys. So we've got a ball inside a, a ball here. Um, we've got a little octopus with articulated legs, and that's all printed in a single shot. We've got some funny little um, worry toys that you can slide things around there. Again, all printed in a single shot uh, and adjustable spanner. Okay, so all this kind of stuff is, uh, is nice. It's not um, particularly functional at the moment, but it gives you a good example of the power of being able to print and remove support material. And we'll come back to that later. So the kind of things that we've printed at UEA are um, holders for our power tool battery packs. Okay, so this is all um, designed using a CAD process that Yogesh has demonstrated to you. These can be fixed to the wall and it gives us a nice tidy way of storing our batteries. Um, other things that we've done are power tools, uh, cutting and grinding and sanding kit all come with um, the ability to connect these things to a vacuum cleaner so that we can remove dust and stuff. But interestingly, all the fittings that we have um, are of a different size, okay? So what we've been able to do is print in a mixture of uh, a blend of polycarbonate and ASA materials, fittings that will connect into the power tool and our own happy Henry Hoover. Okay, so this is the kind of thing where we just want one of the, an item and we can print it easily enough. Um, some other interesting things, I don't know whether you can see this in camera shot. Um, this is a double helical gear. Okay, so um, you can probably just about see that the teeth are V-shaped. And this is quite a nice um, design concept because normally if you've got oblique teeth on a gear, then when you're actually transferring torque load through the gears, then you also get a lateral force as well. But not if you've got half of the tooth in running in one direction and the other half running in the other direction. This is something that would be practically impossible to um, manufacture using subtractive techniques, machining. So we've got a few demonstration items here. Um, other things that we've done is we're looking at comparing the properties of our advanced materials um, against more traditional ways of making, in this case, a connecting rod. So we've got halfway through machining this component out of metal. The great thing about a 3D print is that Bob's your uncle, it's there and done. Uh, this creates a bit of a problem because we need to finish the part by machining the other side. But that creates a bit of a problem because we've got a shape, we've got a relief on this side. So how do we secure this um, to the bed of the mill that we're going to cut it out of? So you can begin to see that our 3D print is offering us complementarity to our traditional machining techniques. Um, I think this might be quite a good point to take you around the machines. So if I ask Aidy to unhitch the camera, and we'll have a look at some of the machines um, that we're talking about here. So um, we've got three high-end Stratasys machines. Um, this is the F370, which we've got some um, widgets being printed here. Um, one of the things I draw your attention to, to the high-end printers, is um, the existence of a sacrificial bed, which I'm not gonna remove because I might break it. That is one of the aspects of industrial quality printing for which reliability is absolutely everything. You've got to make sure that your print item adheres securely so that it's printing um, where you want it to print. And the other thing, of course, the high quality parts are a lot to do with the bonding of the plastic as you carry out the print, which is why these devices are effectively ovens during the course of the printing. Uh, we've got a Stratasys F370, um, not in camera shot, we won't have a look because it just looks like an oven, is a Fortis 450 MC. And I'll talk a little bit about the material properties. What I want to show you now is our J55 printer. So this is very new and operates on a new system where we have a rotating turntable. So this is a polyjet printer. 
Um, so this is a different kind of material being printed. What you see here is some 3D business cards that are proving very popular um, with our industrial partners at Productivity East. And the reason I want to show you this machine is that the great thing about um, the J55 is that we can print completely different designs at the same time on the tray. And that's the basis of how we can offer this machine as uh, the highlight of the competition that I'm going to do introduced at the end of the presentation. So let's go back to the table. Um, we've got a range of materials that can be printed in these machines that you wouldn't find on your classic desktop machine that would typically just print PLA. Um, we've got um, ABS and ASA, which is a, a, a kind of uprated version of ABS. We've got a carbon reinforced uh, polymer. We've got nylon um, material, for example, this thing. Uh, and we've also got uh, high temperature and solvent resistant plastics called Ultem, which is actually used in the aerospace industry. So the machines we've got are actually used by companies like Marshalls in Cambridge, like McLaren Racing to make parts that go um, onto cars. Um, what I've shown you here is a really nice example of one of the things that we use 3D printing for. This is a mock-up of a battery. The only problem is the real one here weighs nine kilos. So I don't want to be throwing this around as part of my day job. So I make a model that is fairly easy to manipulate and very straightforward. I can carry out my research into batteries without having to throw nine kilos around. So well, I've talked a little bit about materials and the kind of things um, we're going to do. At this point, we'll have a little changeover. I will hand back to Yogesh and he will demonstrate some of the designs that you've just seen coming out of the machines. So we have just seen different types of mobile holder models, which we have basically designed by using the 2D and the 3D by using Fusion 360 software. Now we have created the 3D print version files of this, and we have sent it to the different 3D printers, which Chris just has shown to you. And these are just the final versions after printing, which has come. So I'll just show you a few of the models, which we got. Okay, so this is the first model, uh, which I have just demonstrated to you. And you can see that this particular model, if I just hold the mobile here, uh, you can see it quite easily that we can hold it. Now the second one, what we have seen is that we have also seen this and we can also hold our mobile like this and we can see it, uh, the design is different, the model is different. Similarly, we have some more designs so this is one more design, which you can see. This is a very simple design, just like a rectilinear chair, we can see. And this was the other design, which was a foldable and compact. Now this, we have to just keep it on the surface and we can now not vertically. So suppose your requirement is not to hold the mobile vertical, but horizontally like this. So you can keep it like this and you can design it. And if you want to carry this, just hold it keep it in your pocket and you can take that. So this is a different design altogether. Now, this is one more design which I want to show you. And this particular uh, model is not 3D printed, but by laser cut, we have pre ma ma manufactured this. So you can disassemble this completely. And you can, uh, so this, you can just carry like this into two pieces and you can assemble it again. So this is a 3D this is not 3D printed, but laser cut. So these are the different models which we can actually build. Some of them are 3D printed, some of them are laser cut. And of course, if you want to manufacture by using CNC machines also by on aluminum blocks or metals, you can also manufacture it by using CNC machines. So this is about the demonstrations, which I want to show you. You can control different material properties. You can change the materials and you can also design your own models and your own mobile folders by 
creating different geometries and images. So now I'll I'll pass over again to Chris. So thanks, Yogesh. Um, what I want to do now before unveiling our competition and taking some Q&A is to show you the fun stuff. So the J55, which we've had a look at, is really supports something we would call product design, which is where we talked about functional requirements, but all products have aesthetic requirements. So um, the J55 machine might be something, for example, uh, that you would, if you were designing a case and a charger for your ear pods, you would create a mock-up that would allow you to see inside your case to see how your charging connections worked, what your ear pods looked like. And then indeed, from the perspective of the buyer to see a nice carry case and make you really wanna buy this stuff because it's cool. Okay, um, the, let's talk a little bit about how things come out of the J55. So we've got three examples here of a mosquito encased in resin. Those of you who've seen Jurassic Park will get the idea, although this is a slightly more powerful mosquito. So let's start off with how it comes out of the machine. So what you see here is a, uh, a kind of semi-gloss finish, if you like, and the, um, the object is surrounded by support material, which you need basically to allow it to, to be constructed to an appropriate shape. Okay, once you then dissolve away the support material, you're left with something that looks like this, which has got that um, semi-gloss kind of finish. And then you work at it manually um, with a bit of abrasive paper, um, very fine grain, and then a polishing tool to get something that is really quite cool. Uh, and my colleague Dominic here, is taking this out of his pocket every day to show people the sort of thing you can do with our J55. Um, our pops, our favorite um, thing that we've printed on the J55 is our mini trainer. Uh, and this is our multicolor. So the printer will print five Pantone certified colors at once plus transparent. It's rigid, but what we've also, capability we've got the J55, is to produce materials of different toughness, different flexibility, so that our next version of this trainer, should your foot be small enough, will actually be flexible and it will give you a very good ride on the streets of Norfolk. Um, other things that you can make is a, a little carry for whatever it is, whether it's your lip balm or um, something else. Um, and then of course, quite the neatest thing that we've got is the face of John, our electrician, so we needed a 3D scanner to create this and then printed it out um, on the J55 and it is accurate enough to uh, allow his phone to unlock when we wave that in front of it. So we've given you um, an idea of the capabilities of our machines. Next thing to do before we move on to question and answer is to tell you about the competition. Okay, so what we need you to do is to email us uh, to say that you're interested uh, and then we can provide you with full details. Essentially, what we're offering for the best entrance is the opportunity to print on any of our, mach any of our machines. So if you wanna print something cool like this, a design encased in resin, then the J55 um, is the machine you want. If, however, you really need a spare part um, for dad's washing machine, then we can also make that either on the F370 or the Fortis 450. Or again, if you want uh, you know, some workshop equipment for your mum's tools, then you can also maybe uh, submit a design like that. There are two rules, okay? The first is that we want the build volume to be restricted to 75 millimeter cube or equivalent volume. And the second thing is you have to give us half a side of A4 explaining where the idea came from, um, what you had to do to realize it in CAD, uh, and basically your design thinking about, you know, why you want it made, okay? So clearly, um, if it was your mate's idea, you won't do a very good job with your half a side of A4. So we're looking for a neat design 
and an even neater explanation of why this thing is interesting to you. All right. So what to do um, is first thing you do is you email your expression of interest to science.festival at uea.ac.uk. And then once we've got your contact details, then we can start to um, uh, brief you on what the requirements are again uh, and how we take this forward. Okay. Um, what I would say is that if you need a bit of help, we're happy to provide a little bit of help uh, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best. So that finishes the formal bit. Let's move on to the Q and A. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, over to you guys. So we have a question uh, from Asimov's loophole. Question, which is better, Fusion 360 or SolidWorks? Okay, well, which is better, a Rolls Royce or a Mini? It depends what you want it for, doesn't it, really? And I think the simple answer to that is that Fusion and SolidWorks are both good tools um, which are optimized for slightly different applications. I think if you would, um, uh, more, more involved engineering design would probably err towards SolidWorks. If you're looking at a tool that's very easy to adopt, that's good for designing things for making 3D print, then Fusion would also be, uh, be a good vote. What I would say is that from our perspective at UEA, we would want our students to be good at both, okay? Because a lot of people use both tools because they've got different strengths. Uh, we have another question here. How can engineering items like this help society slash climate change, etc.? Okay, um, that's a really good question. So, um, one of the important things that we're trying to do now is to repair more stuff rather than replace stuff. So um, typically, for example, the kind of stuff we've made, simple fittings to make our tools more useful, that is the sort of thing that 3D print can allow you to make one or two of that previously it wouldn't be seen as economical to do that, okay? In terms of, um, also sustainability and reducing resource use. The great thing about all these modern manufacturing tools, and that also goes for the, um, the subtractive manufacturing, the CNC machining, is to provide a virtual model of the manufacture process to tell you up front how much it's gonna cost and how much material it's going to use. So you get to optimize that aspect of resource usage before you actually commit to making anything. Chris, we have another question here from Luke Campbell. Question, how would you recommend to learn CAD? Um, well, I think CAD is such a, a widespread tool that you'll find plenty of good videos on YouTube. Um, remember that everyone responds to different tutoring styles. So um, you might work well with one instructor, your mate might work well with an, another. So I would say, have a look around, give it a go. Um, to be fair, uh, most of the really good video tutorials are supported or endorsed by the people who design the software packages. So typically you might have, um, you might have an organization that relies heavily on community support. You also have organizations, SolidWorks being a good example, where you have um, formal tutorials produced by the company. So a lot of stuff, uh, is out there on YouTube to help you get started. Thank you. Last question. Uh, we have another question. Uh, what is the best 3D printer? Well, um, the answer to that is very similar to what is the best CAD package, okay? 3D printers are optimized for different jobs, okay? If there was a best 3D printer, then we would only have bought one 3D printer, okay? Uh, so the reality is, depending on what you want done, um, there are different machines that are optimized. One thing that's very exciting, um, that is, is properly new and requires an awful lot of inf infrastructure is 3D metal printing. Okay, and very exciting where you combine 3D metal printing with 3D machining. For the same reason that here at UEA, we have 3D printing and subtractive manufacturing, CNC machining, there are different ways to make parts. Okay, so I don't think there is a best 3D printer, unless of course, 
um, you go to the marketing websites of the companies that make them, and then you'll find that every 3D printer is the best 3D printer. And uh, which is the most efficient? Okay, um, same sort of question, but you know, if you've if you've absorbed anything from what we've talked about today, you'll know that efficiency is not about the machine. It's also about the way the part is designed to go into the machine. Uh, so um, someone who doesn't know what they're doing can make the most efficient machine highly inefficient. So it's, you've got to have, take the whole picture from the designer to the programmer to the machine itself. How expensive is the J55 to run? How expensive is the shoe to make? This shoe, I think, was 65 quid. Okay, how many hours did it take? About six hours. About six hours, okay. So obviously we're being extremely generous to allow you to print something like this. Um, but that's a really good question because um, you've got to be very careful about deciding what it is you're going to print and how you're going to print it and what machine. You've got to evaluate the cost implications um, very carefully. Clearly, we need props, okay, uh, to demonstrate the capability of our, our machines. So that's what we've gone for, okay? So that is not cheap, okay, but on the other hand... It's much cheaper than the expensive way. Yeah, it's, as Dominic's just prompted me, this is, to be honest, the only way you're going to make something like this, um, unless, of course, you've actually got... Um, some people with small hands who are going to stitch it all together and the traditional way of manufacturing. So the key thing is there's some stuff that you can do with 3D printing that would be practically impossible doing it any other way. But you've always got to keep an open mind, okay? Creativity, people will have ideas about how you do things. Uh, and of course, the most fun stuff is where you use the best bits of subtractive manufacturing and the best bits of additive manufacturing together. So we've come to the end of our list of questions. Have we got any more? Anyone else got any more queries? And I hope you're all going to sign up for our competition, of course. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, just like to thank everyone for tuning in and uh, hopefully your connection was good. Oh, we've got one more. There's always one more question when you start closing the door. Uh, how long does an average size gear take to print? Um, what well, one of these? I'll have to ask the guys. How much did that? How long did that take to print? It wasn't very long. I think it was a couple of hours. A couple of hours. But we print many things on one. We won't just print that item. Yeah. We might have printed that along with yeah so with these printers good point the capability is to print multiple different things on the same tray at once generally speaking a rule of thumb if you're interested in a good finish and therefore a good a high resolution of your of your print droplets then it will take longer um, and if you if you're quite happy with just a general shape then that's something you can print much more quickly with larger size drops coming out so again you know there is no machine that is really, really, really high resolution and really, really quick, uh, at least not at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the key thing to remember is that um, this is not real time for you because you can set your print job and go off and do something else, okay? So while the machine's working away, you're busy doing, doing something useful. So elapsed time is perhaps not the key thing here. It's how quickly and easily you can set up uh, the problem and how much time it saves you once you're actually using the printed device. Okay, so I think we've got to let you guys go. Thank you again for participating. Don't forget to get in touch if you want to join in our competition and hopefully see you at UEA at some time soon. Bye-bye.